Praise the Lord. Excuse me, excuse me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I just want to make sure you were alive and well out there. Okay. Happy New Year. 2018 is about to end. And 2019 is knocking on our doors. Well, I'm standing before you tonight. And it's a privilege and an honor. And I'm going to stay with my notes. So I'll be on target. Now listen. This is how we're going to do testimonies tonight. I'm going to share some things with you. And then when I've concluded. I'm going to ask you to give me some shout outs. One word of either blessings that you had in 2018 or blessings you're expecting in 2019. Is that clear? So get it in your head, get it in your mind, and you're going to shout it out. But I'm standing here before you um, as one of the pastors here in Bethel Gospel Tabernacle and standing upholding our pastor's hand. Isn't it great? that we can do that, uphold the pastor's hand. So I'm here to encourage you tonight by giving you a simple charge for 2019. You ready? Take out your pen and paper because you're gonna write this down because this is your charge for 2019. What I'm going to say to you is this, I charge you to move towards change. C-H-A-N-G-E, how you spell change? To move towards change. And um, how many of you are expecting God to do something for you in 2019? Different than he did in 2018. But we have to do some changes, right? Perhaps you began 2018 with a list of changes that you planned to make. Perhaps you fulfilled some of those plans. And perhaps you didn't fulfill all of them, right? correct all right perhaps you didn't fulfill all of them but anyway pastor taught us on Sunday that it's not too late it's not too late he taught us that we can be still successful as we make the changes in turning so I have to do some turning all right so here's what I'm going to leave with you so for 2019 I charge you to change tell somebody change Tell somebody, make some changes. All right, so how does this change look? How does this change look? You have to be intentional in making these changes. So how does this look? Now you know I'm big on acrostics. So we, I'm taking the word change and we're going to look at it letter by letter to fill, fill out this acrostic. So to change, the first thing you have to do is letter C. And you have to change by cultivating a posture of being Christ-like. A posture of being Christ-like, not just on Sundays, but Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. In all your ways, acknowledge him so that you can be Christ-like. Never let a human being on Christ you. Make you do and say what you shouldn't do and shouldn't say. Make you act a way you shouldn't act and you should not conduct yourself because they offended you or they said something that hurt hurt you all right so be intentional in cultivating a posture of being christ-like now if things don't go your way thank him anyway things don't go your way you bless him anyway i had to bless him in that airport i had to bless him sitting in that hard seat overnight waiting for my flight Still had to have a posture of thanks, thankfulness and thanksgiving in my heart. Because thanksgiving is not just in November. Thanksgiving is every day. Every day. So develop a posture, creating a posture to be Christ-like. That's the letter C. The letter H is helping, helping, let me make sure I'm getting ready. Helping someone in need. This past Christmas, I was able to work with... Um, my, my daughter's husband, Brian, to provide food for a family of nine that were living in squalor. What did you do? How did you help somebody for Thanksgiving? How did you help somebody for, think, for Thanksgiving? So you can help them by making a phone call or sending a text or offering a prayer or a smile or a hug 
Somebody, all they need is a hug and an encouraging word. So we want you to use your God-given gift to help somebody to lift their spirits so that they too can become thankful. Then the next letter is the letter A. And A is activating your worship. Activating your praise. You writing that down? Don't wait to praise when you get to the church. Praise in the car. Praise when you're getting dressed. Praise while you're showering. Praise in the parking lot, even though somebody took a spot that you wanted. Praise when you come to church. Somebody sitting in your seat that you didn't pray for. Pray anyway. So come in praising. Come on. Come in praising. Activate your worship and activate your praise. And so that you don't need the praise team to pump you up. You came in here pumped up already in the name of Jesus. And the next letter is the letter A. Navigating your life through the word of God every day. What? What's the next letter? N. N navigating. Is that what I just said? Yes. That what I said? Letter N. 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 The letter N. N. Navigating through the word of God every single day. Do not go out of your house before consulting God through his word. What does he have in store for you that, that day? So navigate through the word every day. And as you navigate, your answers will come. And you're going to thank him for his word. Come on and thank him right now for his word. His word is going to save. His word is going to heal. His word is going to deliver. His word is going to set free. His word offers hope. So navigate through the word every day. And G, giving to this ministry. G, giving to this ministry, this ministry that feeds you, this ministry that teaches you. The pastor stands here and he preaches and he teaches, so you need to give. And as you're giving, you better thank God you have a job. Thank God you have something to give. Thank God that you're working. There's so many people out of a job, but thank God anyway as you give, as you walk around and put your offering and your tithe in this basket, thank him and say, thank you God for this job. I'm giving to this ministry because this is a worthy ministry. So give to the house that blesses you. And last but not least is E, exercising your faith beyond your expectations. Exercise your faith. So, I want you to, as you exercise your faith, to expect increases on your job. Expect a raise. Expect miracles to come. Expect God to, to, to bless your family and to bless your children. Expect God to heal you. So, how are we going to uh, 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 live this life in 2019? How are we going to change? What does the letter C mean? Thank you. Change. C-H. What's H? Okay. A. Good. Thank you. Activating your worship and praise. H-S-C-H-A-N. Navigating through the word. And then G. Giving. Giving. Giving to this ministry. And E. Exercising your faith to believe God for what you think is impossible. So now here's what we're going to do. Okay, and I'm not going to pass the mic. I want you to jump up with excitement that you're in this house in the land of the living with one word as to what you're thanking God for or what you're blessing him for for 2018 and what you're expecting him to do for you in 2019. One word, jump up, when you stand, pee, come, stay up there, stand up, darling. That was quick. You, you obeyed because I said popcorn, and you sure popped up. That was good. Peace. Peace that he gave you in 2018, and more peace in 2019 will be yours in Jesus' name. Anybody else? Favor. Come on, who wants favor? Not favor from man, but favor from God. God will give you favor through mankind, but divine favor. Yes, sir. Hedge. hedge. A hedge of protection. Who wants a hedge around them in 2019? And he gave it to you in 2018. Who else? Somebody else. Stand up, please. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Stay right there. Don't move. Don't move. Stay up. Stay up. One, two, three, four. What is your word, sir? Health. Health. He gave us health in 2018, and guess what? Good health coming in 2019. What was your word? Same, double health. Double health for you. In the name of Jesus, we pray it in Jesus' name, yes? 
reconciliation. God is the one that can change a life and change a heart and turn it around. So we thank you for reconciliation. This young fellow right here. Patience. Ooh. This young fellow is asking for patience. So mommy, where's your mother? Where's your mother? Mom, you know how you have to teach him what the Bible says, how he gets patience. You understand? So make sure you help him out with that one. Yes. Strength. How many of you want strength for 2019? Hallelujah. He gave it to us in 2018 and he will continue in 2019. 68 years old today. She's alive. So she's thanking God for life. Life, life, life. Yes, ma'am. What was that? Your pro she wants to activate her prayer life. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. You pray and God will work it out for you. I see two little hands back there. Yes, ma'am. Did you hear what she said? Forgiveness. How many of you did not forgive in 2018? I pray that you don't take that unforgiveness into 2019. That you will end it at the altar tonight. To forgive if you must. Yes, ma'am. Joy. You heard the word she used? Joy. Did she say happiness? Because happiness is temporal. Joy is permanent. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. So the Lord gives you joy. And then we take a few more and then we're done. I'm so sorry. I can't. Can they come up so I can see them? They're so far back there, those little ones. Oh, are they the cutest? All right. So let them go. What is your word? Praise. Woo! That's right, honey. You go home and praise and make a lot of noise praising. Walk around your house and make a lot of noise. Wake up your mother and your father with praise. And what is your word? Yours is praise too? So let me see the two of you praise. Right now, the two of you praise. Right now. Ha all right, all right. They'll praise when they go home. These last two and we're finished. So are yours? What's yours? Love the Lord gave us, gave you love, and he will continue to give you love. Abundant blessings are coming for you, my dear, in Jesus' name. Power. Holy Ghost power. How many of you want Holy Ghost power? In the name of Jesus. That's it. I'm done. The man, same what? Knowledge. Knowledge of God's word. Amen. Come on and bless the Lord and thank him for all the manifold blessings that's coming as we change. Amen. Oh, uh, let's call these young people to come up and praise. Divine praise, come on up and show us how to praise.
Praise the Lord. Wasn't that beautiful? Wasn't that beautiful? They're here in the church in the house of God. And today is a very special day along with my sister. She said today's her birthday. Today's a sister Estina's birthday as well. How many years? 81? Well, she's 81. How many years? How many years? 68. Oh, 68. Okay, that's good. But praise God. We, we love you, Sister Estina. God bless you. I just want to praise you forever and ever and ever for all you've done for me. Blessings and glory, blessings and glory.
Hallelujah. We're so grateful for all the ways that God made for us in 2018. Looking forward to all the ways he's going to make for us in 2019. I'm grateful. Hallelujah, Lord. I'm grateful. You made a way when my back was against the wall and it looked as if it was over you made a way and we're standing here only because you
How many can say the Lord has been good? How about better than good? Hallelujah. When we minister this song, just think about each month this year, how God has come through for you. How he made a way out of no way. For some of you, experience miracles. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. Can't praise you enough. Even if I try, cause you've been so good. to me yeah. oh so many doors think about it so many ways so many times you've been better than good to me yeah. oh so many doors so many ways so many times you've been better than good to me yeah. oh, so to me oh so many doors so many ways so many times you've been better than good to me oh better than good to me better than good to me better than good to me better than good better than good better than good to me better than good to me you healed my body you made me whole you renewed my mind gave me a fresh new start oh better than good to me better than good to me provided for me provided for me when I didn't have no money you fed me you put clothes on my back to me better than good 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 to me better than good to me just 
take a minute, take a minute. What is the better than good for you? What is your better than good? I know what mine is. What is your better than good? What is your better than good? What is your better than good? Think about it and bless his name. Think about your better than good. You've been so good. You've been so good. Thou art, then 
Bethel shall we all stand please we're going to continue to worship the Lord in our giving and when we think of the goodness of God how good God has been in his provision all year long I pray that even as you stand here in the presence of the Lord that the Lord will speak to you perhaps he'll ask you to give more than you intended to so we're here to receive the Lord's offering and if you don't have an envelope uh, our ushers are handing out the envelopes.
and we're going to come rejoicing and giving God thanks because God loves what kind of a giver? A cheerful giver. So we're going to come just think about the goodness of God and how, how wonderful God has been. He's provided for us in incredible ways and we're just going to return a portion of what God has blessed us with. Amen. So I'm going to pray and after that, would you kindly follow the direction of the ushers? All standing, please. Thank you. Heavenly Father, how grateful we are tonight, Lord, for this opportunity to give a year-end offering to you. Father, we pray that you would bless the hands of everyone that gives tonight, Lord. We pray that as they give, Father, that you will give to them so that they will have a continuous supply to give back to you. May we come with grateful hearts, hearts of thanksgiving, worshiping you, Lord, as we give our offering. So, Father, we pray that this offering will be sanctified, used for the kingdom of God and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.
that's in me. Praise the Lord, everybody. Is your heart fixed? Is your mind made up? Amen. I said at the seven, uh, the six, uh, six o'clock service, that God has truly been good to us. Has He not? If it had not been for the goodness and mercy of the Lord, some of us wouldn't be here today, because the devil tried to take some of us out of here. But God said, "Not so." Aren't you glad He said that? Amen. And as we uh, continue in the service, I just had a thought that uh, the Lord uh, placed upon my heart and the pastor graciously has given me an opportunity to share it with you. Uh, very brief, very concise, a thought or something to entertain as we embark on the new year going forward. Uh, the thought comes from John chapter 3 and uh, the 30th verse. I'm going to read... Uh, Two verses prior for context, and then I'll share two thoughts with you, and I'm done. Uh, John chapter 3, verse 30. It deals with a testimony about Jesus given by John the Baptist. The voice that was crying in the wilderness, preparing the way for the Lord to come and engage in the ministry of reconciliation and redemption. And in the 27th verse, it says, John answered and said, a man can receive nothing except it is given to him from God. We can receive nothing unless it has been given to us, not earned, but given to us, not bartered for, but given to us from heaven itself. And this lets us know clearly that whatever we have, whatever we possess today, is a gift that God has divinely bestowed upon us, and as we often hear it said, for to whom much is given, much is required. So if the Lord has blessed us with anything, we are to use it for his glory and for his honor. Whether it's tangible or whether it's talent or ability, it is important for us to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So that he can continue to add to us that which is necessary to make life meaningful and complete. The 28th verse says... You yourselves bear witness that I said, I am not the Christ. When John was preaching, what he was teaching and preaching was revolutionary. It was new, and there were many who felt that he was the Christ who had come, but he wanted them to clearly know that he was not the Christ, but he was sent before, ahead of Christ, to prepare the way. And the way was prepared for, the, for Christ through the ministry of John, and the way has been prepared for us through the ministry of Jesus. Whatever God has assigned us to do, he's already laid the foundation for our success. All he requires of us is that we submit to him and be obedient to his command, doing his will, and we will succeed in everything he has called us to. The verse concludes with the 30th, which says, He must increase and I must decrease. That's what John was saying in this passage of scripture. Now, to increase is very simple. It means to multiply by propagation. To multiply by propagation. And multiplication by propagation means multiplication by natural reproduction. Sheep beget sheep. If we are the ambassadors of Christ, his representatives upon this earth, then it is important that we become like that city set upon a hill which cannot be hidden. We are responsible to let our light so shine that men and women will see the work of God manifest within us and come to glorify him ultimately so that they can be disciples or servants of his. We're not to garner followers of ours, but we're to garner those who will follow Christ because he's the one who must increase. And uh, he concluded by saying, I must decrease. To decrease is to make less, to cause to diminish or to minimalize. And that's what he was doing. He was drawing to the end of his ministry as Christ was emerging in his ministry. Christ was increasing, 
John was decreasing. And what it says to us today is that it's really not about us at all. But it's about God being glorified in us and through us as we submit to do his will and to make him known to all men and women that we encounter in this life. And if we will understand that, it makes our lives much easier because it makes us uh, totally dependent upon Christ for success. And it takes us out of the equation and puts Christ in the center of everything we do. For the word of God says we have to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. I conclude with this thought. My goal, my desire, my ambition for the year 2019 is to do everything I can to decrease so that Christ can increase in the work, the labor, and the service that I render unto him. I want to point men and women everywhere to Jesus Christ so that they can know him and begin to serve him in spirit and in truth. Do me a favor. Would you say it's not about me? Uh, no, nah, that, that means you're talking for yourself. You're not talking for me. I'm talking for me. You're talking for you. Say it again. It's not about me. Now say it one more time. It's not about me. The reason I want you to say that is because many times we think uh, whatever we do in the church is really about us, the talent and the ability that God has given to us. We showcase and we shine in front of the people. But it's really never about you. It's always about Christ being exalted. And if you'll understand that, then as we embark on this new year and you decrease and allow him to increase your witness and the imprint that you leave upon the lives of others will be multiplied in ways that you cannot even imagine. I've often said the saddest picture of a believer is one who lived here, all their lives went to church, shouted, danced, had a wonderful time, but never did anything for the Lord never engaged in any service. So when they stand before God, they have nothing to lay at his feet. I don't want that to be your legacy. I definitely don't want it to be mine. And the way we make sure it's not is so that he can increase each and every day and we decrease so that we can have something to lay at his feet. The service that we've rendered unto him. Make up your mind, make it your business that you're not just going to uh, resolve to do better this year, but you're going to commit to do it by the grace of God. If you put God in the forefront of all of your plans, he will give you the strength, he'll give you the impetus and the vision to see to it that he is glorified in everything that you do. And at the end of the day, we will all be able to say to God be the glory for his great things he has done. Amen? Amen. He must increase. We must decrease. And it's not about me. It's about Christ every step of the way. Not I, but Christ who lives in me. God richly bless you is my prayer. Amen. Hands of Praise is going to come and minister at this time. even words to describe just how great you are in all your majesty you continually provide for me there just isn't
Praise the Lord. Can you praise him for the sovereignty of God? You know, when you understand the sovereignty of God, it makes this walk a lot better. You won't take on so much when you understand who God is and he can do what he wants once we sign on the dotted line. Amen. First, let me state what a privilege and an honor it is to serve in this church as one of your pastors. And as I think of the year end, it's just my heart is just so full. This is really the best church anywhere, and I'm just so honored and pleased. And I'm just here briefly to challenge you, just share a little something that the Lord gave me for you. Can we all repeat the 23rd Psalm right now, everybody? Everybody. The Lord is my... Mm -hmm. Restoreth my soul me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over surely of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever you know if you're not if you don't really study the Psalms you can really get used to just saying a psalm like this at a wedding or a funeral and just oh, the Lord is my shepherd but let me tell you there's so much meat in this psalm that will get you through 2019 amen because when the Lord is saying he's my shepherd there's relationship right there because he's in relationship with us. And, and, and the most important part is when we are in relationship with Jesus Christ, it just makes life so much better because we can just reach out and touch. Come on, somebody. 
Amen. It also speaks of supply. We're not going to want end for anything. He said he will supply all our need uh, according to his riches and glory. Has he done that for any of you this year? Come on. We're not talking about what the S at the end, but your need. All that I've needed, your hand hath provided. Amen. He makes me to lie down in green passages. We're resting. We need to rest. I'm speaking to myself. Sometimes we just go so much. We don't take time to rest and bask in the God, the sovereignty of the God that we serve. Amen. He restores my soul. Have you been healed this year? Has God supernaturally healed your body? Can you lay your hands on your body and say, Lord, touch me right now? Not 1-800-HEAL-ME, no oil, just the faith in your your faith will make you whole and you say Lord give me a touch in my body and he heals you I have been healed by God supernaturally and I know what it is to be healed by the uh, mercy of God he restores my soul he's healing us he guides me in the past uh, path of righteousness there is guidance he says in all thy ways we are, are to acknowledge him and what will he do he will direct us and when we make decisions on our own we mess up we mess up so bad how many messed up this year because you took on something you know you had no business taking on come on being honest is healing but when we acknowledge him even in the simplest decision because he knows the way that we take and when we go we will come forth as pure gold if we do it God's way so we have to seek him for guidance. It says, for his name's sake, there's purpose being spoken of here. And even though I walk through the valley in the shadow of death, we're going to be tested this year again. Many of us were tested last year. How do you go through a test? You know, we need that relationship I just spoke about. When you're in relationship with God and you get bad news, there's a certain way we handle bad news as believers. Come on. Come on now. I mean, we, we're allowed to cry and we're allowed to be human. Jesus did that. He was human. But when we shake ourselves loose, we say, God, you're in charge of this thing. I can't fix it. I can't change it. So I'm giving it to you. And I'm going to trust you with this hard place when we're tested. That's what gets his attention. When we trust God, we sing all for grace to trust you more. We need to trust God even in the test. We're not going to fear any evil. We're going to be protected. Goodness and mercy follows us all the days of our life and we are protected. And, and, and even when you, you think of the age in which we live, the every day there's tr uh, trouble and turmoil in this world and on the news we see the terrible co things that are happening and we know that the rain falls on the just and the unjust, but God still protects us. You know, we may be injured, but we don't die. The injury will heal. Come on, somebody. Come on. Yes. Things will happen, but God restores us and he brings us back to where we need to be. He's that kind of God. We don't have to fear for evil. For he says, for he's with me. He is faithful. He is faithful. God is a, if we could only be as faithful to God as he is to us, He's a faithful, faithful God. His rod and staff will discipline us. The word of God says, whom he loves, he chastens. So we're going to be disciplined, but it's with love so that we can be better. He prepares a table before us. There's our hope right there, even in the presence of your enemies. That's why, listen, when people mess with you and want to harm you, don't take it personal because God's going to fix them for you. Come on, somebody. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, they will suffer. When you mess with the people of God, you can't do it. Be careful. Be careful. And then he anoints our head. He'll consecrate us unto himself for a work, for the ministry that he's called us to do. And then our cup will overflow with abundance. Abundance. Come on. You have things you, you couldn't afford if you worked all day for it. God just will give you the desires of your heart. If you seek him and do it his way, he will, you won't have to work two jobs. He'll give it to you. See, y'all quiet, but I know what I'm talking about. Amen. Amen. And then I love the way it says surely, not maybe and it might. It says surely, goodness and mercy. Surely, you can count on it. Goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. And then after all of that, you're going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Look at the promise of God here, saints. Come on. So listen, read this psalm throughout the year and let it bless you. You'll find yourself in a situation where you'll need relationship, you'll need supply, you'll need healing, you'll need guidance, you'll need purpose, you'll, you will need testing, you will need protection. Just read the psalm and let it minister to your spirit. And I promise you God will, will lift you up 
to where you belong. Do you believe the word of God? Do you trust the word of God? Amen. It's a lamp unto my feet and a light unto our pathway. So be encouraged tonight. And let me end with this. You know, our pastor, what is this, your second year, Pastor Rod? This is my second service. You know, I'm tired, y'all. But I'm serious. You know, every Sunday he's out there on the steps and you say, oh, pastor, you preach. Oh, you just bless my soul. And then we don't see you no more till next Sunday. Mm-hmm. You know where I'm going with this? Mm-hmm. But what about Thursday night Bible study? Wouldn't it be wonderful to look, look out and see this here? Amen. Amen. Even if you come once or twice a month, just show up. You got to refill during the week. And it's so encouraging to him and his wife to see us here in the flesh. Not our words, but our bodies here. We have, we have Sunday night service, 5 o'clock. We have Thursday night. Now, Friday is all night prayer. This coming Friday. Mm-hmm. Now, if we had a breaking news on the TV, like 9-11, we would need police escorts outside so you all could pray. So why don't we pray it away before it even comes on Friday night? Hello? That's what encourages the heart of our pastor. He's young, he has a vision for this church, and wherever we go next, he's gonna take us. Are you all on this ride? We need to show up. That's the support he needs. Pastor Bev spoke about giving, we need that, but he also needs to see us here at the right time, at the right place, amen? Are you willing to make a sacrifice in 2019? We have to do better. God's giving us another year to get it right and to do better. Amen? So thank you. And I think we have, what, the challenges? Yes, now we're going to have just a quick shout out from you of what you expect God to do for you in 2019. What do you expect God to do? Come on, shout it out. Y'all don't have no expectations? Hello? What would you like God to do for you in 2019 that he hasn't? You better speak those things as <laughs> are not as though they were. It could be uh, just a, you know, like, uh, like somebody said today, retirement earlier. Huh? A sentence, just a sentence, a sentence. Yes. Mature in the Lord. Anybody else? Contentment. Continued favor, closer to him, unsafe loved ones to be saved, amen, 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 yes, Usher, Burnett, pardon, move the mountain, come on, see y'all, next, if we live to 2020, some of these will be answered, some of these will be answered, yes, Peace and healing in relationships. Yes, sweetheart, this little child. Oh, look at that. That's a child. That's why Jesus likens so much to children in the Bible. He said, if you come like a child, isn't that what the word says? All right, who else? Anybody else? Yes. Being faithful. Yes. Amen. Healing, oh God, healing cancer? Yes, God, yes. Yes, sir. Amen. Peace and contentment on his job. Balcony? Uh, all right, uh, uh, Johnson, Mike Johnson Jr. Hear his voice. Brother in the back? Sister in the back? That hair threw me off. Ponytail. What did she say? Amen. Get, do what? Become debt free so she can give more. You know, sometimes you can give your way out of debt. I'm not, this is nothing against you, honey. I don't mean anything personal. But there are ways when you give above what you don't have, give out of your lack. Listen, all right. Yes, sir. Greater anointing. Favor. Favor. Amen. 
Yes. Balcony. Success. Amen. Good. Good health, natural blood. Anybody else? We're going to close this segment. Amen. In every area. Amen. Amen. Total healing in her body. She wants to serve God in a better capacity. Her health is holding her back. But she promises if he heals her, she's going all the way. Amen. Just we have time for a couple more and that's it. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Consistency. Yes, over here. Fruitful. Okay, now let me ask you, how many of you in here want to mate? <laughs> how come you didn't get up and say it? How come you didn't get up and say it? You shame? You better speak that thing, and I'm going to sit down. Who? How many want a mate? If God sent you the man or woman he has tailor-made for you this year, how many would want that? God bless you. I don't know how you can follow that one. <laughs> Sitting down on your mate. Come on, praise team. Now we're gonna get five. Come on, praise team. We're gonna get six testimonies right after this song. Six testimonies. Three on this side, on three on this side, okay? But we still got a lot of time and we definitely wanna give God praise, amen? Lord, Lord, I thank you, Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Lord, I thank you. Thank you all the days of my life. Oh, Lord, I thank you, Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Lord, I thank you. Thank you all the days of my life. Lord, I thank you, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you all the days. Testimonies from this side. Come on. I want you to come down here. Come on down here. We got the microphone. Put you on the screen. Yes. And three testimonies on this side. Right here. Microphone right here. Amen. Two minutes. Praise One minute. Lord, everyone. One minute. I would like to attest to what our Reverend Beverly Sherrod said uh, about giving your way out of debt. I, um, I have some property that belongs to my, belong to my deceased mother in Barbados, which she left for her grandchildren. And the taxes due got out of hand. Sometimes I could pay it, sometimes I could not. But this no past year, I know that I have given above and beyond even in, in paying my tithes, I, I exceeded my giving. Amen. And um, through a tax amnesty program, I was able to uh, have my cousin in Barbados go down to the tax department. She went to pay my taxes, and they were reduced by $10,000. So I start out 2019, owing zero. Amen. All right, this is it right here. This is it right here. Okay. Yes. 
Praise the Lord, saints. Um, great is God's faithfulness. Great is God's faithfulness. Mornings by mornings, new mercies we see. Um, I thank God for the Bethel family. Um, I can't tell everybody, but your prayers and your encouragement have meant um, a lot to the family. And I didn't want to, you know, just have this year end and not let you know that I love you and I appreciate all that you guys have done and continue to do for the family. And, um, you know, God, God is still faithful. He's still showing himself mighty and strong, you know, he says his ways are not our ways, his thoughts are not our thoughts. So we just have to continue, or I choose to continue just to trust in him. Um, he's still blowing my mind with some of the things he does. He's letting me know he's still here. And um, he's strengthening me each and every day. And I thank God for the prayers, once again, that help, because I know it's the prayers of the righteous that strengthen me every day, strengthen my family. So I just love you, thank God for you, and continue to pray for the family. Amen. Truly, I thank God for the prayers of the righteous because they availeth much. And I can truly say that because I know that I know that I know. December the 1st, I was a victim of a stroke a stroke. When I, when I was rushed to the hospital, they quickly did all the tests and whatnot, and that was 12.30 a.m. They said, Mr. Davenport, we can't do an MRI until 8 o'clock when the team comes and whatnot. When they did the test, they said, oh, you had lesions on the left side of your brain. That's why your right side is not functioning. But you know what? The way God had worked that thing out, that when I got to the hospital, I still had all my faculties. I still had all the use of my motor skills. I had all of that. Okay? So they sent me back home, not knowing that within the next seven days, every day, the symptom would still come back. So here was now a week, and it happened this time. It went in my mouth, and my tongue went numb. And my wife called the physicians, and they said, we need to have it admitted. They went through all the tests, all of this, all of that, and the doctors were scratching their heads saying, how can this man go through all these strokes and still have all of his faculties, all of his motor skills, and I can move around, I can dance around, and I can shout for glory because God is a good God, and nobody can tell me that he is not a miracle worker. Hallelujah. a miracle working God and I stand before you I could not let this year go by without standing and telling the people of God thank you my church family and giving thanks to the Lord last year this time I was in a dark dark place things touch each one of us differently and my heart was broken I was I was depressed. I didn't even want to get out of bed. Um, my granddaughter, that had been in my life since she was, before, well, she, when she was born, but she had been with me pretty much since she was two years old, and I had not gone 48 hours without having spoken to her or seen her in, in those years, from two up until last year. And suddenly, this time, last year, she was snatched away from her father in my, my home. And we didn't know or speak with her. And that was the longest I have ever gone and her father without speaking with her in seven, eight, nine days. Christmas came, New Year's came, and we were still 
without Uriel. I have never seen my son cry too often. He's not an emotional person like that. But when we went to court, we had to finally go to court to fight for her because she is a part of our home and she's a part of our life. And he has raised her and he has as much right to her as his mother, her mother. And when we went to court, I'd never seen Justin. He's not emotional like that. But when he went before the judge, and the judge was being pretty rough with him, he broke into tears and explained how his daughter meant so much to him and how much his daughter was a part of his life. The judge had to do a, a, what they call a, um, a delay, a, de a postponement until they could get all the facts and all the information. To make a long story short, a year of back and forth to court, back and forth to court, with the support of my pastor, Pastor Bev, Pastor Sherrod, coming to court with me, Bishop praying with me, praying with the family. I can stand right here today and say the court, which is not, doesn't usually rule like this, ruled in favor of my son. My son, my son. And you may say, well, that's your granddaughter, but she's more than a granddaughter. She is his, his daughter, is my, grand, my granddaughter, but she is such a bright light in our home, and she's such a bright light, period. When I get her ready for school and she's walking out the door, and if I forget to pray with her, she'll turn around and come back and say, Grandma, we didn't pray. We didn't pray. So I know God has her in my life for a reason. And I'll say, okay, really, let's pray real quick, because sometimes we're running late. But I just wanted to say thank you. We even had to put it out there on, um, my son, he, he was losing his mind last year this time. He went on Instagram and Facebook, he put it all out there. Where is his daughter, you know, looking for his daughter? Well, it wasn't a case of kidnapping because she was with her mother, but it was a legal battle and it's all, you know, working out, but the relationship has to heal between families. We want this thing to be smooth and loving between families. And that only God can do that. Only God can do that. So continue to pray for him, pray for me, pray for Urel, pray for the healing between families because that's the only one who could do that is the Lord Jesus Christ. But thank you, thank you, thank you for all your prayers. All of you who knew about it and prayed with me, thank you again. Bishop, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Um, I just want to really thank God for just being who he is for the past few days. I've been talking about the sovereignty of God and just that regardless of whatever we go through, he is still sovereign no matter what. I posted it. I've been telling people about it, that God is good no matter what. And today I got a message from my doctor and they said that they found something that was slightly abnormal. And what they found can cause cervical cancer. So I need to do a small procedure. And it's like the enemy is still saying, so you're going to minister tonight and talk about the sovereignty of God. And I'm like, but he is still sovereign. He's not only sovereign when things are good, but he is still that sovereign God when things are bad. So I'm blessing God that I'm not entering the new year depressed. I'm not entering the new year, oh, I'm starting off a bad year. Absolutely not. He is sovereign over every single thing. So that's why I'm blessing him. Amen. 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 All of, all of these uh, testimonies show that when, you're, when God is with you, the impossible can be done. And the special thing that God did for me show how much he meant to me. So in school, I was getting 60s and 70s on my tests. And then, uh, and then a, a God told, God, I kept telling myself that I don't want this anymore. So then uh, with the help of God, he made me get 90s and 100s on my tests. And, and God has been so good to me. And a message to you all is that when God is with, when all is lost, God will work it out.
praise God, everybody. I just want to tell you, young man, you bless me. You bless me. Even as a teacher, I love to hear students who work hard and get the grades that they got to get. Um, I just want to thank God. Um, this year has been a difficult year. Not the way I planned it, but it's the way God orchestrated it. Had two surgeries this year, one May 14th, pyrothyroids, never heard of it before, had it, had to have surgery, got through that, that was a week. June, sight in my left eye started messing up. Learned how to deal with depth perception, not being able to drive at night, having to have family members help me around and do different things. Um, November 27th, I went back for my doctor's appointment. We were doing regular checkups. He says, oh, you have to have the surgery now. I said, okay, I get out of school December 21st. He said, no, this was Tuesday. He said, you have to have it Monday. Otherwise, you won't be able to see anymore. I said, oh, okay. So, had my surgery December 3rd, and it's been an uphill battle after that. I had to, on my recovery process, for three weeks, I had to have my head down in something, I don't even know how to describe it to you, but I have to have it down, up 15 minutes only in the hour of a day. So, I set a timer, I, 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 um, I YouTube, I looked up how people went through the surgery. It was um, retinal detachment surgery. And one lady said that what she did was, she set a timer to help her, remind her to 45 minutes down and 15 minutes up. So I said it to Sovereign God as I put my head down, and Incredible God as I was able to lift it up. It was very difficult not being able to do, just being so independent and having to depend on somebody for everything became extremely annoying for somebody who likes to do everything. But I want to give God glory and thank him for my family members, my friends, my neighbors, everybody who stepped in and didn't call it, didn't think it robbery to help me out when I needed the help. I still need help because I can't see from the left side. They said the vision should be coming back, but it's slow. And even if it doesn't come back to what I want it to come back, I know that God is still good. He's still faithful. He's a sovereign God. He's merciful. He's kind. And he's all that. So I thank God and I give him all the glory. Can we pray? Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Doctor, come on. Let's pray. Let's pray. If you believe God, he's sovereign God, we're going to pray for our sister. So let's stand in agreement. Let's. nothing too hard for you oh god we thank you that healing is the children's bread oh god i thank you because you said you wish above all things that we prosper and be in good health even as our soul prospereth oh god and we thank you for my sister oh god lord we thank you for total restoration of her sight in the name of jesus total reattachment of her retina in the name of jesus all scars removed in the name of jesus total healing and restoration in Jesus almighty name and we thank you oh God and we glorify your name and we bless your name hallelujah hallelujah That is done in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Just before our pastor comes.
bless his name hallelujah bless your name Jesus he's worthy of the praise we are a grateful church right now hallelujah Tragedies are commonplace All kinds of diseases People are slipping away Economies down People can't get enough pay But as for me All I can say is Thank you Lord for all you've done for me hey. In the street, drug habits, some folks say they just can't be. There's terrorists and robbers, no place seems to be safe. But you've been my protection every step.
Amen, amen, amen. We serve a good God. We serve a great God. And I wish I had just three people in here that would stand to their feet and give the Lord a high note of praise for 2019. Lord, you are worthy. Lord, we thank you. Lord, you are worthy. Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. You brought us this far, oh God. You brought us this far, God. To see another year, Jesus. We don't deserve it. We don't deserve it, but you have been good. You have been good. You have been good. You have been good. We may not understand it. We may not understand it, but you are good. And we just want to say thank you, Lord, for your goodness and for your mercy and your compassion towards us. The Lord has been good. The Lord has been gracious. We are on the cusp of a new year, 2019. This year went by so quickly, so fast. Time waits for no man. The statement is true. But you know another statement that's true, it's that God is good. No matter what the season, God is good. Even when we don't understand it, God is good. He is faithful. Even when we are faithless, even when we didn't deserve it, he came through for us. Even when we fell short, he still protected us. He still covered us. Even when we wanted to walk out on him, he had the grace and compassion enough to pull us back. I'm just so thankful. When I look back on this year, I'm thankful that God didn't leave me where I was. I'm thankful that God protected me from myself. I'm thankful that God opened doors and blessed me and gave me favor that I didn't deserve, favor that sometimes I wasn't looking for, that God kept me in the midst of my pain, in the midst of some heartache, in the midst of some challenges. He kept me in my right mind when I could have lost it. I'm just so grateful that I serve a God, that I serve a God that is like none other. He's not just watching me wallow. He is with me. He is protecting me. He is providing me. When I was in lack, he provided. I thank you, Jesus. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God is good. God is good. He's done some amazing things in 2018. And how many of you are looking forward? You can be seated. How many of you are looking forward to some other incredible things that God is going to do in 2019? Can I hear you make some noise for that? The, the amazing, incredible things that God is going to do in 2019. Now, a quick statement. This is... Uh, uh, news flash to many of us but god does not need your money right god owns the the cattle on a thousand hills he is the alpha the omega the beginning and the end he does not need your money but surprise surprise his church needs your money to keep things going to keep lights on to get get bills paid to help the the, the mission and the work of god move forward the church needs that and I think it's an incredible thing that that what the Lord blesses us with financially we're always blessed to be a blessing and we are what stewards not owners we're stewards of everything owners of nothing the Lord blesses us time and time again and, and to see how we will steward the money that the Lord blesses us with and so after this this service excuse me after this this message uh, uh, this is an opportunity for you to give to sow into 2019 yes to be thankful for 2018 but also to sow into what god is going to do in 2019 because we have some expectations and we want to say god i'm thanking you in advance before you meet those needs before you answer these prayers i'm thanking you in advance so by faith i'm sowing this seed it doesn't have to be a lot whatever it is the lord lays on your heart whatever it is but just uh, uh sow in in expectation of what god is going to do in and through you next year amen Amen. Amen. So turn with me in your Bibles, please, to the book of Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. 
Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Today I'm going to be talking about the freedom to move forward. The freedom to move forward. Many of us are excited about moving forward to 2019. And that's something that uh, we're going to do whether we like it or not. Because time waits for no man. Time keeps on marching. Marching on. And it's not going to slow down or stop for you. So whether you like it or not, whether you're ready or not, 2019 is coming. And so we want to be able to move forward with time. The freedom to move forward. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking to Jesus, the founder, the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted." So that you may not grow weary or faint hearted. Dear God, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your truth. I thank you for who you are. I thank you for how you've met us thus far in this service, for how you've covered us and protected us over this year, for how you've blessed us and been with us every single step of the way, even when we didn't feel your presence. Lord, you were with us. I'm so thankful, God for how you've blessed us, Lord. And I pray right now, God, that as I speak, you would be seen, you would be heard, you would be felt, you would do what only you can do, you would speak to the hearts of your people, God, as I speak, Father. I thank you and I praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. It's extremely important for us to not just move to where, from where we've been, not just let time move on from 2018 to 2019, but to nail down this concept of having the freedom to move forward and do it consistently until it becomes a principle in our lives. If we're truly to move forward, we cannot possibly expect to do so by coming to church, sitting down, listening to a sermon, and going out like nothing ever happened. If we are to truly move forward, application is key. Application is key. Application is necessary. What you hear should not stop just at your hearing. In the house of God, when a a word is spoken or a word is given and the the, the word of God is, is brought forth, it shouldn't just stop at your hearing, but it should be applied to your life. And when it is applied to your life, that's when the truth of the gospel comes to fruition and, 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 and is more evident in your life. Can't expect so much change just by, but just by, by, by just hearing it and not actually applying it. So application is necessary. Follow through is necessary. Now in this text, Hebrews chapter 12, I find it interesting because the author does not say that we need to be able to move faster. Doesn't say, uh, 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 therefore, since we're surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses, uh, lay aside every weight uh, that so easily besets us, look to Jesus and, and run this race. It doesn't say to move forward faster. The text says to move forward with endurance. Move forward with endurance. In order to do that, we need to realize that it is within our power through Christ Jesus to move forward with endurance. We are free to move forward. Now, we may not know it now, sitting here in December 31st of 2018 at uh, 1118 p.m. We may not know it now, but around the corner in 2019 is success. We may not know it now. We may not see it yet. But around the corner in 2019 is a job well done. We may not know it yet. We may not feel it yet. But around the corner in 2019, we are getting beauty for ashes. Around the corner in 2019, we say weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. That morning is coming in 2019. And that's a wonderful thing. But also, in order to have ashes, in order to have that weeping, you've got to have pain. You've got to have sorrow. We all want the beauty for the ashes, but no one wants the ashes. We all want the joy to come in the morning, but no one wants the weeping that may endure for a night. 
And I can tell you one thing, if there was weeping in 2018, if there was ashes in 2018, there's going to be some seasons of weeping and ashes in 2019. It hurts to hear, but it's a, it's a truth and it's a, it's, a, it's a fact. There is, in order to have uh, those ashes, you have to have pain, you have to have some sorrow, you have to have some difficult times. And if we know anything from 2018, it's that our life has been no stranger to difficult times. I know I'm not the only one that's been through something difficult in this past year. Can I see some hands of someone that went through anything and came out the other end whole, came out the other end? But after any great success, after any great uh, uh, upward mobility comes some sort of opposition, comes some sort of test, some sort of push. But in 2019, are we prepared for both the good and the bad? Are we prepared for both the good and the bad? After we reach some, some setbacks and fall down a little bit, are we, uh, a, do we have the ability and capacity to get up and move forward after our setbacks? After our setbacks that we may reach in 2019, uh, are we going to find ourselves in some spiritual chains? After our setbacks that we'll reach in 2019, are we going to find ourselves in bondage? We have to take strategies that, that, to, to prevent ourselves from doing this we, so that after our setbacks, we don't find ourselves repeating the same mistakes, being in repetitive behaviors that we swore we would leave behind in 2018. After the setbacks, we need to understand that we can still have the freedom to move forward. The freedom to move forward. So this book of Hebrews is, 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 is written just to, to say overall that Jesus is better. Better than what? Better than the lambs that are sacrificed. Jesus is better than the angels that sing holy, holy, holy. Jesus is better than all of these heroes of the faith that are mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11. Jesus is better. He is God and he is greater and we give honor and worship to him and him alone. That's why the book of Hebrews is written and we pick up in verse in chapter 11, excuse me, where the writer says, now, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, talks about this, this, these heroes of the faith, talks about Isaac and, and Jacob and, and Joseph and all these people that did great things in God, not by their own strength, but by faith in God. By faith, Isaac invoked this future blessing on Jacob and Esau. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed his sons and blessed Joseph's sons, and they bowed in worship. By faith, Joseph, at the end of his life, made mention of the exodus of the Israelites and gave directions concerning where he was to be buried. By faith, all these great things happened by faith. And the writer is saying, since we're surrounded by these great individuals, this great cloud of witnesses, let us run this race with endurance. People are watching you. They're watching your life. They're witnesses. I remember when, when uh, LeBron James first went to Cleveland, everyone was saying, what? We are all witnesses. That was like the slogan. Everyone's a witness. Well, well, everyone is a witness. You have witnesses over your life watching you, watching what's going on. There's a commentary that says, we're surrounded by the saints of the past in a unique way. It's not that the faithful who have gone before us are spectators to the race we run. Rather, it's a figurative representation, and it means that we ought to act as if they were in sight and cheering us on to the same victory in the life of faith that they obtained. So they obtained victory in this life of faith, and we too can do the same. We are to be inspired by the godly examples that these people in Scripture said. For those of us who need to open up this book and read about them, read about them and we will be inspired by the examples that they set. Many of us, even if we don't read about them, we have people in our lives that have poured into us. A grandmother, an aunt, a father, a mother, a mentor perhaps, someone that poured into you and showed you about the truth of this gospel. Run this race as if they're watching. Run this race as if they're looking. He says what? Let us also lay aside, since we have this great cloud of witnesses, we must what? Lay aside every weight that slows us down. Every weight that so easily besets us. And the, the, the interesting thing about weights is sometimes they don't stop us from running. But weights stop us from running at the pace and the speed and the way that we were designed to run. 
So weights in our lives, you may be fine because you think, oh, I'm still running, I'm still moving, but are, what pace are you moving at? How slow is this, how, 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 uh, how much time is this specific weight that you have costing you? And a weight can be anything. Uh, internal pain, incorrect priorities, comparison between you and someone else, a distraction that gets thrown into your life. You know what your weight is. You know what it is that's slowing you down from running effectively. It's anything that hinders our walk with Christ, that pulls us back, or that slows us down. Anything that hinders our walk, that pulls us back, or that slows us down. We must lay aside every weight, the text says. And we must also lay aside the sin which clings so closely and easily besets us, easily distracts us, easily knocks us off course. Sin is simply this, missing the mark. Anything that allows you to miss the mark and get knocked off course is sin. When you live in consistent and constant rebellion towards the will and the way of God, that is sin. And it takes great effort to walk this walk and to be focused in this walk. Take care, brothers, lest there be in you any evil, an unbelieving heart leading you to fall away from the living God, but exhort one another every day as long as it is called today so that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. See, many of us think sin is just going to come up and say, hey, I'm sin. I'm going to ruin your life. Nice to meet you. It's deceitful. It's crafty. Comes in creeping. And before you know it, you're hooked. The deceitfulness of sin, it leads with a different face than is actually behind the mask. Let us run with endurance. It takes effort to stay focused, but with Christ we can. It takes effort to stay plugged in, but with Christ we can. It takes effort to be free so we can move forward, but with Christ we can. It takes great effort to not be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin because the enemy prowls around like what? A roaring lion seeking for someone to devour. Let it not be us in 2019. The enemy is crafty, but we serve a true and living God. The enemy is dangerous, but we serve a God who is even more dangerous. We serve a God that is more powerful. We serve a God that is greater. If we believe that, we must live like it. If we believe that, we must live like it. The text says, let us run with endurance. Endurance. Focus on how we run. How we run. What is your pace? Run with endurance. This shows us that the Christian walk is not a sprint, but a marathon. It's not a sprint but a marathon. It's not about who gets there first, who gets there fastest, but it's about who endures. It's a marathon and you must learn to pace yourself. Pace yourself. You must drink from the living water to stay hydrated. Not just any type of water, not just regular Gatorade. You got to drink from the true and living water. The well that never runs dry, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, the true and living God, and you will always be hydrated. And when your body wants to shut down and you feel as though you cannot go on and you hit that wall as many runners hit when they're running a marathon, the Holy Spirit will give you the grace to endure and push on, endure and push on. Paul writes in, in, in one of his, his verses, he says, I beat my body and make it my slave. I understand that I'm not going to be led by my feelings, by what I want, because I can finish preaching to you and then go engage in some of the things that I'm telling you not to be engaged in. So I don't want to do that. So I, I, I beat my body and I make it my slave. And I say, look, you're not going to be led by those desires. You're going to be led by the spirit of the true and living God that resides on the inside of you that will cause you to run this race with endurance. That's what Paul says. And so... Run, run this race that sets before us. That's what we're running. We're running this race that's set before who? Before us. What do we run? We run our race. We run our race. Our race. And get rid of the things that so easily beset you. You run your race. You run your race. You're not running my race. I'm not running your race. We're all running this race, but it's at different, uh, different stages. We have different uh, races that we are running towards this cross of Christ, towards eternal salvation, towards that, those heavenly gates, right? 
We all are running a different race. Your race isn't my race. My race isn't your race. Run this race that's before us. Not your neighbor's race. Not your mother's race. Not your brother's race. Not your friend's race. Not your, your sister's race. Not your auntie's race. Not your cousin's race. You run yours. You run yours. And get rid of the things that so easily beset. What's one of those things? One of those things, I believe, is comparison. Comparison kills. Some comparison is, is a slow and silent killer. And before we realize it, we don't realize how much it's actually killing us. In 2019, I believe we need to get rid of some comparison. The things that so easily beset. Get rid of looking at someone else's grass and thinking that it's greener on the other side. Be content with who you are, who you are, who's God made you to be, especially in this age of social media where you can just scroll and look and tap and scroll and look and tap and scroll and look and tap and swipe and wish. But no, 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 no. We have to be content with who God made us. You are uniquely designed by the creator of the heavens. God has equipped you with some things that no one else has. God has deposited some truth within you that no one else has. To be a light in this world, to be a vessel in this world, you are created by an ultimate creator with a unique design, a unique purpose, and a unique gift like no one else has. So do not diminish your value by comparing it to somebody else. Do not diminish what God has deposited within you by longing for what someone else has. Be content in who you are and in who God has made you to be. Run your race at your pace. Run your race at your pace. Many of you are wondering why you're so tired. Many of you are wondering why you're so weary. Many of you are wondering how you're, how you're so winded in this life because you're not running at the pace that God designed you to run because you're looking at someone else's pace. And you're saying, maybe if I do what they do, I'll get the same results. And you're frustrated because those results aren't matching up for you, but that's not your race to run. You run your race at your pace and then you will get the, yield, the, the, the results that you desire. Run your race, not your neighbor's race, not your mother's race, not the person you see on social media's race. Run your race. There's this group called Gnarls Barkley, and they have this song called Neighbors. And they says, in the song it says, now, my neighbor likes my clothes, but hasn't seen me with my scars exposed. Now, my neighbor likes where I stay, but doesn't know the price that I've paid. My neighbor wants to be me. You see, you don't know what they had to give up to get where they are. You don't know what possibly they had to compromise to get where they are. You don't know the hard work that they had to put in to get where they are. You don't know. And so as a result, you're, you're looking and longing, but you don't know the journey. And that journey may not be what God has called you to. Comparison is a killer, so that's why we must run our race. That's why we don't compare. That's why we don't look to others, but we look to, as the text says, Jesus. Looking on to Jesus, who is both the author and the finisher of our faith the founder and perfecter of our faith this faith that we have we look unto Jesus he's the one that started it said let there be and there was he was the one that was in the beginning one with God the Lord most high spoke it all into creation had this faith the author authored it and finished it a love letter written in in his blood on Calvary's cross, I died so that you might have life and have life more abundantly. I died that you might be set free. I died so that you might have this life, be set free and free others. Jesus, the author and the finisher, he that began a good work in you will be able to perform it until the, until the, the, the will, he that began this good work in you will bring it to completion. He's not going to stop halfway. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. He's our keeper. Look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. There's a text that says, there's a hymn that says, turn your eyes upon Jesus. 
look full in his wonderful face and the things of this world will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace so this race that we're running with endurance we're running it with blinders on because yes there are distractions to our right and yes there are distractions to our left and there are distractions behind us but we are solely focused on the king of kings the lord of lords jesus the christ the son of the living god the one that died so that we can live the one that died so the holy spirit can reign on the inside of us we are focused on jesus christ as we run this race with endurance with endurance let's be focused on Jesus this author and this finisher because through Jesus we know that we can finish this race well through Jesus we know that we can finish this race well Jesus Christ God wrapped himself in flesh and lived among us one commentator said that's why he had to enter into every single detail of human life Jesus is both the blueprint and the architect the way, the truth, and the life. Look at what Jesus did in the book of Colossians. It says that he canceled the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. We're talking about being debt free, right? Through Jesus Christ, he canceled our debt. We had a debt that we could not pay as a result of sin, as a result of rebellion against God. We had a debt that we could not pay. Jesus came and said, it's canceled. Jesus came and said, I'll pay it all. Jesus said, came and said, I'll pay it in full. Jesus came and said, you don't owe a dime. Jesus came and said, I will pay it all. I will take this punishment on my back. I will take this crown of thorns on my head. I will take these nails in my hands. I will take these nails in my feet. I will die so that you might have life. He canceled this record of debt that stood against us along with its legal demands. He set it aside. He nailed it to the cross, the text says. And in doing so, he then disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities and put them to open shame. He triumphed over them through God. He triumphed over them in him. Through the cross, Jesus turned the tables. What looked like defeat was victory. It says he disarmed the rulers and the authorities. That's why we as believers, we have more authority than we realize. Yesterday I spoke on Cain and, and Abel and how uh, the, God spoke to Cain and said, sin desires to master you. Sin desires to rule over you. But Cain, you must rule over it. And many of us, we sit on our hands screaming, help me God, help me God with this sin, help me, help me. When God has given us his Holy Spirit and given us his authority and given us his, his strength to walk in and be victors over the sin in our lives. So through Jesus, through the cross, he turned the table and now he is seated at the right hand of God with all power and all authority. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 3 says, consider him who endured such hostility against himself so that you may not grow weary or faint hearted. Once again, it goes back to endurance. It's about endurance, saints of God. It's about endurance. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself so that you may not grow weary or faint hearted. How many of you had to endure some things in 2018? You had to go through some things. You had to go through some trials. You had to go through some circumstances and you had to endure them. It wasn't fun. It wasn't pleasant. It was painful, but you endured. Think about Jesus, the Christ, the son of the living God. God wrapped himself in flesh, came down and lived among men for 33 years. He left a perfect world. He left a sinless world and came to live among sin. The creator came to live among the creation. And then that same creation spits on him. That same creation beats him and mocks him, ultimately kills him. But in the course of his life, that same creation never speaks out. And never, they, they don't all as one voice declare, you are God, you are king, holy, 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 we worship you. The majority of his ministry, these people walk away and they only want him for what he can do, not for who he is. All his life misunderstood, having a group of misfits that he calls his disciples that he pours into and having one fellowship, one communion, being one with God. 
And then even that gets put at, at jeopardy because God turns his back on him on the cross. And he says the words that, that, that he says those most utter, those painful words, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus endured so much. And this race, this Christian walk is about endurance. It's about endurance. Don't grow weary in doing well. Next year, when it gets difficult, we're celebrating the good times, what God has done, getting us from 2018 and 2019, but it's going to get difficult. And when it does, do not grow weary in doing well. Do not throw in the towel because things did not go your way, because things did not go how you thought they would. Hebrews chapter 10 says, for you have need of endurance for, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what is promised. It says, but we are not of those that shrink back and are destroyed, but we are of those that have faith and preserve their souls. We're not of those that shrink back and are destroyed. When it gets difficult, you're going to be, you're going to be tempted to throw in the towel. You're going to be tempted to give it up. You're going to be tempted to, to, to walk away from the faith. But we are not of those that shrink back and are destroyed, but we endure and we persevere and we preserve our souls because we have what? The freedom to move forward. The freedom to move forward. We have the freedom to move past our past. To move past our past. We have the freedom to give our hurt to Jesus and move forward. To give our pain to Jesus and move forward. To give our unforgiveness to Jesus and move forward. To give our sorrow to Jesus and move forward. To give our anxiety to Jesus and move forward. To give our anger to Jesus and move forward. But many of us say we want a new year, but we're going, through, we're going in it with old things. We're going in it with anger. We're going in it with anxiety. We're going in it with unforgiveness. We're going in it in this new year saying, new year, new me. Really? <laughs> but we have a lot of these old habits that we're taking with us. But we want to be free, 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 free. We want the freedom to move forward. The freedom to leave it at the foot of the cross and cling to the cross. I said, I said yesterday, how do you expect to cling to the cross of Christ with your hands full? How do you expect to, to, to let Jesus uh, 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 reign and rule in your heart when it's filled with unforgiveness and bitterness towards the people that hurt you? How do you expect to be free in 2019, going into 2019, saying, I'm never going to forgive this person for what they did to me? We want freedom, but we want to move forward. But yet we feel entitled to hold on to these things as if they belong to us. Hold on to this anger and let it fester like it belongs to us. Hold on to this resentment and let it build up like it belongs to us. Hold on to this, this sadness that, that we carry like it belongs to us. And we end up in the long run looking like, a, 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 I said this yesterday, Gollum from Lord of the Rings. When he's, he's looking at this ring and he's saying, my precious, my precious, my precious. And he's thinking it's bringing him joy, but really it's causing him nothing but pain and decay. Many of us, we need to let these things go so we can be free to move forward. We need to let these things go so we can be free to move forward. God wants, to, wants us to be free, not just from the sins of our past, but the sins of our present. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 4 and 5 says, We must avoid being the kind of people that have the appearance of godliness, but deny its power. We must avoid being the kind of people that have the appearance of godliness, but deny its power, but deny its power. We don't want to have a form of godliness, but deny its power to cast off our weights and cast off our sin. We don't want to just look the part. We don't want to just have it look, look good on our resume, but have no real work experience and not have anything that we can put into practice. We don't want to have a, 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 an appearance of godliness, but deny the power. I declare for us that there's no more denying the power of the true and living God in 2019. No more complacency in 2019. No more coasting in 2019. No more slacking in 2019. We will walk in the fullness of the love of God. We will surrender to the true and living God and walk in the truth of who he says we are. 
Walk in the goodness that he has for us. Walk in the victory that is ours through Christ Jesus. The freedom to move forward. Because Jesus overcame sin, we can too. Because Jesus overcame sin, we can too. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. John chapter 8, verse 36. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 17 through 18. John chapter 8, verse 31 through 32. If you abide in my word, then you are my disciples. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. If you know the truth, you know the truth, and the truth will set you free. If you know the truth, you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. But what does it say before that? If you abide in my word, then you will be my disciples and then you will know the truth. And then that truth will set you free. Many of us want freedom without abiding. Walking into 2019 saying freedom, but we're not abiding. And the truth will set us free. Luke chapter 4, Jesus says why he came. He says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives, the recovering of sight to the blind, and the liberty to those who are oppressed. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, we are called to be free. To have the freedom to move forward. To have the freedom to not live in bondage. Because so many of us, unfortunately, are accustomed to living in sin that we forget about to evict the sin that lives within us. We're so accustomed to living with sin around us that we forget to evict the sin that lives within us. And when God sets us free, we often go back to chains. Why? Because they're familiar. When God set Israel free and walked them through the, through the Red Sea, the minute they got to the wilderness, the minute it got difficult, what did they say? Were there no graves in Egypt that you brought us here to die? It's better in Egypt than right here because it's difficult. Do not let the difficult moments in 2019 send you back to the chains that God freed you from. Do not let the difficult moments in 2019 send you back to the chains that God freed you from. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Freedom takes time. Freedom takes patience. Freedom takes resolve. Freedom takes focus. But freedom is possible. How do we move forward as I close? How do we move forward? We fix our focus. We fix our focus. Looking not unto ourself, not unto our Instagram, our Facebook, our Snapchat, not unto our, our, our dating apps, not unto any of that. We look to Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith. Fix your focus. What are we focused on? Take a real look at your life and see where you need to reprioritize. Secondly, remember why you're running. Jesus ran for the joy that was set before him. His joy was to be reunited with the Father and to bring us into reconciliation. He had to remember why he ran. And for us, we have to remember why we're running this race. We have to remember why we're doing this whole thing, why we're being believers in the true and living God. Remember that it's not just about you. You are blessed to be a blessing. The ultimate blessing is not a, a, a whole lot of money in the bank and all these cars in your driveway. The ultimate blessing is to, to know that you are a son and a daughter of God and walk out in that. And that blessing is not just for you to walk, to, to, is not just for you to own, but to be a blessing, to leave a legacy. To, 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 to leave a, an impact on your brother or sister, to leave a, a, a good influence on someone who's watching you run this race. Remember why you run. Thirdly, you need to lighten your load. Lay aside every weight. Lay aside every weight that so easily besets you. The weights that are keeping you stagnant, that are pulling you back, that are helping you move forward. Fourth and finally, Leave behind your limitation as the, as the team comes up. Leave behind your limitations, but embrace your boundaries. Leave behind your limitations, but embrace your boundaries. Leave behind your limitations, but embrace your boundaries. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I'm a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to bitterness. I'm a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to lust. I'm a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to anger. I'm a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to sin. I am a child of God. Leave behind those limitations that you once defined yourself with. As a child of God, you are truly limitless. 
But at the same time, you have to embrace your boundaries. Your identity lies not what in what you do, not in what you not in what you drive, not in what you wear, but in who and in whose you are. Being a child of God is yes, the key to success, but what does that look like? There's nothing freer than a child. You set a child free and just say, go ahead, do what you're gonna do. All the ice cream in the tub is gonna be gone. Everything's gonna be great. They're gonna color all outside the lines. Everything's gonna be a mess. But they're free in that. They're limitless in that. They see no limitation in that. And as a child of God, we are free, but we need to embrace our boundaries. Because as a child of God, he sets rules, regulations. He sets things up for us to succeed. And we need to embrace those boundaries that he gives us. So how do we move forward? As I close, we need to fix our focus. Remember why we run. Lighten our load. And leave behind the limitations, but embrace our boundaries. Perhaps there's someone here today that does not know Jesus Christ. You came here for you know, a New Year's service and you do not have relationship with this true and living God, this Jesus. If you are here today and you don't know Jesus, you don't have a relationship with him, you have not prayed a prayer asking him to come into your heart, to forgive you of your sins, to, to cleanse you from all of your unrighteousness, from all of the filth, from all of the things that separate you from Jesus. If that is separate you from God, if you're here and you do not know Jesus Christ, I would hate for you to leave this place and leave the same way you came in, not knowing Christ. If you're here and you don't have a relationship with him, I'm going to ask you just to be open, to be honest, and just to raise your hand and say, that's me. I just want prayer. I'm in need of prayer. I'm in need of salvation. I'm in need of a change in my life. If that's you, is there anyone here today that does not know Jesus and wants to come to know him? We have some people here that are just going to pray with you and speak to you about the truth of the, of the gospel. Anyone here? that says, look, I don't know Christ. Maybe you once had a relationship with him and things were once okay, things were once doing well, but over time you decided to go do your own thing and you feel that God's calling you back today. If that's you, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus and you want a relationship with him, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. Is there anyone here? God bless you. I see your hand. Thank you so much for your honesty. Is there anyone else that will be bold enough to just say, look, I'm in need of a savior and I want to make that change today. Is there anyone here? Anyone else? All right, my sister, thank you so much. I'm going to ask you to take another step of faith and just come forward, please. You're not coming to me. You're not coming to the church. You're coming to Jesus Christ. So just come forward. As she's coming forward, I'll ask everyone to stand, please. Everyone, you can clap and stand as she comes forward. Thank you so much for your honesty and your transparency. Appreciate it. Thank you. Now, once again, if you're here and you're just not sure of where you would go if you were to be called from this life into eternity, if today was to be your last day, Many people are out there uh, driving around and not really knowing what's, what's, what's awaiting them and they will not wake up tomorrow. And if you're just here and you're unsure of where you would go if that were to be you and you just want prayer, I'm not trying to scare you, it's just real, it's just life. If you want prayer because you're unsure if you would be with God or separated from him, I'm going to ask you to remain standing while those that are sure take their seat. If you're unsure, remain standing. If you are sure, take your seat. Anyone here? I see you guys in the, in the, in the, I see you guys. Please come forward, please. Thank you so much for your honesty. Come forward, please. Everyone standing, please come forward. This is the most important part of the service right here. This is why we do what we do. And this is why Jesus came so that we might have life and have life more abundantly. Thank you for your honesty and transparency and coming forward. I'm just going to pray with you. And then we have some people that are going to speak to you all over on the side. So dear God, I just thank you, Lord, so much for your daughters, God. I thank you for their openness, their honesty, their vulnerability, God. I thank you for them to come forward and being in this, this position, God, of just surrendering and saying, God, I want to be sure. God, I want to be sure that I have salvation. God, I want to be sure that I'm your child, that I'm your daughter. God, I want uh, freedom and wholeness in you. And I pray that they would continue to, uh, 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 that as the person speaks to them on the side, God, that they would just be blessed, that they would be ministered to, that you have uh, just protected them from the hand of the enemy, God. I pray that the enemy would have no dominion, the enemy would have no authority, God, and that you would do what only you can do in their lives, that you would create such a shift, such a change, God, that they would not recognize the, 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 the person that they were before, God, but that you have made such a shift, a change in their lives. I pray that this is the start of a new day, this is the start of a new chapter, this is the start 
start of them being free to move forward in faith, to move forward in victory, that 2019 will not be 2018, God, that you will have victory for them in their lives. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, altar workers is going to speak to you on the side very quickly. Thank you. Thank you. So, dear God, I just thank you so much just for each person here, each believer in you that knows you, God. I pray that as we cross over from here into 2019, that you would continue to be our strength, that you would continue to be our hope, that we would continue to rest on you, that we would move forward in faith, that we would move forward in victory, and that we would know that through you, we have the victory. Through you, the enemy is defeated. That through you, every single obstacle that we face can be obliterated, God, and that you are more than able to deliver us, more than able to keep us, more than able to continue to give us the strength to move forward. Amen. And we thank you, Lord, for all that you've done and all that you're going to continue to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Very quickly, I would just like us to prepare for this offering. So if you have any, uh, if you need an envelope, the ushers are here. We're just going to hand out the um, the, uh, the, the plates very quickly. I'm just going to pray. Dear God, I just thank you so much for this offering, God. I thank you for those that are willing to give out of the generosity of their hearts to your church and give so that the mission can continue on and give so that you can be glorified, God. I pray that as they sow this seed of faith, that they sow this seed of faith, that you would meet them exactly where they are, God, that you would pour in, that you would bless them, that you would keep them, Lord. We thank you and praise you for all that you've done, all that you're going to continue to do, and we thank you for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name, we pray all of these things. Amen. And amen and amen. you for the freedom that you give us father we thank you god that you are with us every step of the way even when it gets difficult we thank you that we know that freedom is a process father we thank you that you freed us in mind free us in body free us in soul and in spirit and help us to be committed to that process we thank you and we praise you in jesus mighty name we pray amen and amen and amen thank you lord i will just ask us all to please stand Everyone please standing. There's about a minute left until the new year. And I think it's only fitting 
that we go into this new year giving God the praise that he's worthy of, giving God the honor that he's worthy of, giving God the glory that he's worthy of. So at the end of this new year, the first thing on our mouth is hallelujah. But the first thing on our mouth is thank you, Jesus. The first words on our mouth are, Lord, you're worthy to be praised. The first words out of our mouth is thankfulness, thankfulness and glory to the true and living God. Will you lift up the name of Jesus? Will you worship Jesus with me in this place? Will you say hallelujah? will you say thank you Jesus will you say you are worthy Jesus thank you for your mercy thank you for your compassion thank you for your goodness thank you for your kindness thank you that you've been with us we thank you for 2018 we thank you for 2018 and we thank you for what's to come in 2019 oh God we thank you that you are with us in 2019 that no matter how difficult it gets we can hold to you no matter how difficult it gets we can hold on to you we thank you for your many blessings oh god the blessings that are around the corner the blessings that we don't even know are coming the blessings god we thank you father for how much you are going to bless us we thank you for your love thank you for your compassion hallelujah jesus you are worthy to be praised lift up the name of jesus hallelujah of Jesus and all that he has done for me my very soul cries out hallelujah I can't help but praise him I can't help but give him thanks I can't help but give him praise because he is worthy to be praised hallelujah Lord hallelujah Lord we thank you for another year another year we do not know what this year holds but we know who holds this year we know who holds this year his name is Jesus the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and he is a sovereign God he is in full control thank you Lord you are worthy to be praised worthy to be praised thank you Lord thank you Lord another year Saints of God another year people of God another year Another year to turn it around another year to make it right another year to get it together another year Hallelujah, Jesus. So thankful for you, God. Thankful. So gracious. He's a gracious God. His grace chases us. It will continue to chase us this year. His favor chases us. It will continue to chase us this year. His mercy chases us. It will continue to chase us this year. We serve a merciful God, a compassionate God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If we could just take two to three minutes, if you could play something uh, so, so often in the background, <laughs> and just take two to three minutes to just pray and to write and to think of the goodness of God in 2018, but to think of moving forward in 2019. Pray to God. Sit at your seat and just pray to God and say, God, I thank you for how far you've taken me in 2018. I thank you because I'm not supposed to be here. I should have lost my mind a long time ago. But God, you spared me. 2019, we don't know what's ho what, what, what holds, but we know that God is in control. So let's just take this time to pray.
We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. We worship you. Praise. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. We worship you, our Lord. You If he's worthy, let me hear you give him some praise. Hallelujah. 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 For a new year. Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now greet the person next to you. Say, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I'm just going to close out with a word of prayer. But just know, remember that the altar is open for anyone that wants prayer. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Happy New Year, everyone. From me up here to all of you, I wish you all a happy and a blessed New Year. For those who want to stay and pray for a while, the altar is open, but have a safe and blessed new year. I'm just going to pray. Dear God, we just thank you so much for this time. We thank you for your people. We thank you for how you love us, for how you've blessed us, and how you've kept us, God. And I pray right now, Father, that as we leave from here, but not from your presence, that you would just continue to be glorified in our lives, that you would continue to keep us safe in this new year. Protect us, our families. We pray for blessings. We pray for favor. We pray for discipline on our end. We pray for faithfulness on our end God we pray that we would be faithful that we would be committed that we would run this race well that we would run this race with endurance that nothing would knock us off course and we declare today January 1st 2019 that the enemy is defeated he is under our feet he has no victory in this place he has no victory in our lives he has no victory over our families we declare the truth of the true and living God over our families that every single plan that the enemy has for you in 2019 is canceled in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We declare victory over our homes, victory over our finances, victory over our families, victory over our health in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We declare these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen, and amen. Thank you, Lord. Happy New Year, everyone. God bless.